privilege and a real pleasure to participate in this. And I'm, you know, of course, saddened that there's no motor show to go enjoy right. and to, to mingle with, with folks on this. And I'm, I'm glad to see the slide up here is being shown. I just have one little slide to talk about. Uh, and that is to sort of set a perspective of the, the, um, the current situation. This is how standards are currently done, but it's, it's also modern. It's not too traditional. Um, and I'm gonna step through it briefly. You know, a bunch of uh, probably overworked volunteers come together. And I see a lot of them as attendees here today. I'm, you know, they're dedicated a tremendous amount of effort and technical capabilities to, to producing these standards. They get together in various topics. Sometimes the topics didn't even exist prior to when they come through them, such as uh, the field of micromobility. Didn't even know what to call them, but a group was formed and they came through and, and they did it voluntarily based on some motivation. The motivation in, in the beginning of SAE was on safety and productivity. And it, it's pretty much still the um, motivation in a non-competitive manner. And uh, inputs, you know, whether they be a heavy goods vehicle manufacturer, micromobility, bus coach, uh, or, or they're specialists in certain cross-cutting areas, such as systems engineering or hardware in the loop, or whatever. Or, or some groups came together, come together as consortia or cooperative research or funded programs and, and, and work on a standard um, in an uncompetitive manner. Uh, and I, perhaps we can talk about in the panel some more, but, but safety is highly competitive. Uh, so there's a balance in there. And then the standards, and this slide just shows that they go you know, uh, support various national or local legislations, and they support the, the UN WP29, the ITC, uh, WP1. Um, the standards are shared with, with ISO, IEEE, other SDOs, and they ultimately go into GTRs or regional North America regs or the, uh, the 58 agreement perhaps. And they, they get into product, of course. Um, and uh, I, I want to say that they're, that they're consensus and they're voluntary. So not only is participation voluntary by, by, uh, by the experts, the adoption is voluntary. However, it, it still is a very good practice to follow them. And I think that may be another point in the panel discussion of, of what is a policy of a good practice versus something that may or not, may or not be in a regulation. And the, the last thing I wanna say is the time. Um, and I, I think back to a, a very highly competitive project I was privileged to lead, which is uh, about 22 years ago, and that was the heavy goods vehicle, and it was called Roll Stability Control. And we actually took control of the driver away uh, at the point when the vehicle's onboard technology considered that this combination heavy goods vehicle might roll over. And we took control over momentarily. Uh, it, it may have seemed like an eternity to a driver back then, a second or two where, where the machine took control over the, the driver's uh, ability to steer and deliver fuel and brake, all three functions and uh, on the tractor, on the power unit and on the braking of the uh, trailer behind. To put that in perspective, it took uh, about four years to develop that, to validate it, to use the term used in our DMAT group, to validate it. There were no regulations in place other than the brilliant Motor Vehicle Safety Act that, that said, regardless of what regulations are in place, the product better be safe. It took about four years. Back then, a gigabyte of data cost a thousand euros. That was about Time frame. I started when the euro came into being. So put in perspective. Um, right now, from a metric perspective, an essay. The uh, I just looked Friday. Uh, uh, the um, average time to from inception of work in progress to a published standard for the heavy truck group 
was about 13 months at SAE. And that's still an eternity when I think of, I can't, probably can't even count the number of software updates I'm offered on my iPad in 13 months. I wanna, I wanna close with that. The difference of a four year development from perhaps some people might consider something very trivial 20 years ago of, of a, a stability control system Data, the data costing me then a, a, a thousand euros a gig and my boss thinking I was out of my mind. To, what do you need that much data for? Data collection for when you're doing development work. And then now. So thank you, Ian, for this privilege. And I look forward to a lively discussion.